This morning we want to look at roadblocks to God. What's that? Roadblocks to God. And I lift the passage from James chapter 1, verses 20 and 21, for our contemplation this morning. It reads, For the wrath of man worketh not in accordance with the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. That's the way the King James Version puts it as we look at roadblocks to God. Let me read now verse 21 from the New Living Translation. And it says, Get rid of all filth and all evil in your lives, and humbly accept the word of God, which God intends to plant in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. The word of the Lord is already blessed. What does God's voice and the cell phones have in common? In both instances, God's voice and cell phones, in order to hear clearly, we've got to be positioned correctly. Let me repeat. In order for us to hear God's voice or to receive reception that comes through a cell phone clearly, we have got to be positioned correctly. And I would like to suggest from the outset that in order for us to surmount the roadblocks to God, the obstacles to God in our lives, we need to be positioned correctly. I'm speaking to all of us at every level of our existence and our sojourn and our pilgrimage upon the earth onto glory. So reception quality with your cell phone, as we know, invariably it varies widely. In a big, complex, sturdy structure of a building, your coverage might be spotty, unreliable. In a wide, expansive area of nature, you're likely also to have no cell service. Again, we've got to be in the right position to have a clear, reliable, dependable signal. The same is true, my, my friend, with your relationship with my relationship with God. If you want God to hear, and if you want to hear God's voice clearly and consistently, then you and I have got to be positioned, positioned correctly. What does it look like to be in the wrong position in terms of what God is saying? When you're in the wrong position, when I'm in the wrong position, your mind and my mind is close to what God is saying. Oh, this is so important. This is so important. You've experienced it. Now I've experienced it. Everybody has experienced it who calls him or herself a believer. You want to do your own thing. Have you, have you ever had that experience? Yeah, if you want what you want, not what God wants. Uh, we are in the wrong position at times. Our heart becomes hardened because of circumstances that occur that seem to continue to unfold to go against what we perceive is what type of life we should be living. And when that happens, the result is that we are unwilling to listen. To listen to people many times who have our best interests at heart and surely it makes it difficult to listen to God. So what keeps our hearts from hearing what God is saying? And what stops our ears from receiving 
the clear signals from glory. There are three particular barriers or roadblocks to God in this message. And the first one is pride. We know the good book says, and it stands to be repeated, that pride goes before a fall. If you and I think that we don't need God in our lives, and we want to handle things ourselves, then all that means is that we are likely not listening to God. This is so crucial because many times we are convinced in our own selves that what we want and what we're doing is what God wants and what God wills. But many times it is us, it is our sinful nature getting in the way of what God wants for us. So that pride, that stubborn, that stubborn thing, that thorny thing in our souls and our spirits called pride, this thing, this, this insidious uh, uh, element of, 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 of nature, human nature, pride, many times keeps you from being open to the possibility that God might want for you something else than you want. He may want to say something other than what you want to hear. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. And so the second thing after pride that keeps us from hearing God or that stands as a roadblock to God in our lives is fear. Fear. Uh, many people can't hear God because they are simply afraid to hear God talk. Hmm? You might think that hearing God's voice or sensing his leading makes you some kind of religious favorite, but many people just shudder at the thought of what God will say to them. And they are frightened. They are afraid. They are scared. Many times because they figure that what he will say to them, they will not be able to handle. And so the, the fear keeps them from opening up their hearts, opening up their minds to hear God talk to them in their circumstances. Or maybe you're afraid of the changes that you'll be called upon to make by God if you listen openly in an unfettered way to what God is saying or how he is leading. Fear. I'm telling you, my friends, that thing called fear, it will paralyze you as a believer. It will keep you from experiencing God's favor. Fear is an albatross around the neck of the believer that will hold him or her back from the promises and the purpose and the favor of God. And then thirdly and lastly, the thing that keeps us, the third thing that keeps us from hearing God, the third roadblock to God, to God, that we need to be weary of, vigilant about, is bitterness. 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 Uh, the Apostle Paul cautions us to, to, to be aware, to be careful. Uh, to be vigilant not to let bitterness take a foothold in us. Uh, bitterness and malice. When you hold on to your hurt, huh? When you hold on to hurt and resentment or a grudge, guess what? It's a roadblock to God. It's a roadblock to God. And when we hold on to bitterness, we are not hearing, we are not able to hear what God is saying. A hard heart goes cold, it grows cold, and it makes us defensive. It puts up a roadblock that God in his spirit, uh, what he intends for us, cannot penetrate, cannot penetrate. Many times, a defensive heart cannot even be penetrated by God's love. Oh, by God's love. God wants to do so much for us, but if we hold on to bitterness, to resentment, to the hurts of the past, 
we really cannot move on. And, and if we cannot move on, we really cannot understand or appreciate or acknowledge what God wants to do for us. James 1.21 again, I remind you, says, as it invites us, get rid of all the filth and all the evil in your lives and humbly accept the word of God, the word that God has planted in your heart. And what is the purpose that he plants his word in our hearts? James says he plants his word in our hearts to save our souls. Oh, my friends, this morning, this morning, it's time to get rid of the bitterness, the fear, and the pride that keeps us from hearing God's voice and living out his purpose for our lives. When we hearken to what God is saying, even in this meditation, guess what? You will be able, I will be able to hear God with an open heart, with an open mind, with open ears, and humbly accept what he's saying to us. How do you hear God's voice or senses leading? Ask him for grace to run this race and for the Holy Spirit to take over, to knock down those barriers, those roadblocks in our hearts so that we get the victory over the past and we can hear clearly the word, the thus said the Lord. May the Lord bless us by his grace to get rid of pride, to overcome our fears, to get the victory over bitterness right now, right at this moment, right at this moment, to take the steps that his word has declared for us to get the victory, to not ignore what the Lord is saying even right now through his Holy Spirit. My prayer, my family, is that you, like I, will respond positively to God's invitation this morning by his Holy Spirit to get the victory over the roadblocks, the roadblocks to God in our lives. Yes, pride, bitterness, and fear. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving Heavenly Father, I thank you, I praise you, that you are still in the miracle working business. And the greatest miracle you have performed is the miracle of saving our souls. Now, O oh God, grant us grace in this sanctified walk to get the victory over the three roadblocks. O oh Father, to hearing your voice and following your will and purpose and attracting your favor. The roadblocks of pride, bitterness, and fear. Thank you again for the victory today, I pray. For I ask it all in Jesus' name and all of God's grateful, thankful children said, Amen.